The first time South Dakota State met South Dakota on the gridiron was 1889. Welcome to the 2024 USD SDSU Football Rivalry Special. I'm Charlie Preen. And I'm Ethan Leidke. We have players, coaches, and analysts yet to come. But first, we ask SDSU students what they think of the new secondary logo for USD. USD just got a new secondary logo, and we're asking people what they think about the new logo. Um, I don't look, I don't love it. It looks pretty animated. I don't know. I think SDSU is superior, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Kind of looks like a dog that is sick. I don't know. It kind of looks like an AI-generated sort of sort of logo. It doesn't look very good. Not a huge fan of it. It looks pretty good. I like it. I like the red eyes. Pretty good, but I think the old one is better. It's worse than the old one. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. I like that. I like that a lot. I like the paw better. It's pretty ugly. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> The logos highlight differences, but there are also similarities. Coral Mason's a sophomore guard on the USD women's basketball team. She has a close connection with the SDSU football team. Chase Mason, Coral's brother, is the backup quarterback for the Jackrabbits. The Masons attended Viberg Hurley High School. When it came time to leave for college, Chase chose South Dakota State, but the younger sibling Coral has always wanted to wear different colors. Well, actually, I, I grew up a USC women's basketball fan, so right when they contacted me, I was like, yes, I want to be part of the women's basketball program. Not only do the Masons have a sibling rivalry, they have rivaling schools, and they celebrate that in a special way. The next upcoming football game, I've been talking a lot of trash to him, and he's been saying stuff, but yeah, he doesn't wear any red, so, or I don't wear any blue to his games, so... Coral says her family is neutral. However, she claims her father put on a USD shirt for the first time ever, only because she's a coyote. The Masons will continue to have a natural feud other than a normal sibling rivalry. The transfer portal is having an increasingly bigger effect each season, and USD has a new face from the portal that isn't so new to South Dakota. AJ Coons is a senior wide receiver for the Coyotes who has spent three years of his career wearing Jackrabbit blue. Koontz is preparing to face his former team for the first time. Uh, it's definitely been something when I committed here that I thought about uh, kind of the first thing. I heard a lot from a lot of those guys uh, that I used to be teammates with, uh, a lot of guys that I came in with uh, up there. But um, I'm excited to go back up there, see a lot of people that I still have a lot of love for. But uh, we're, we're trying to accomplish our goals and play in that game. Koontz has four catches for 103 yards and a touchdown this year for South Dakota. Coons will come off the bench against his former team on Saturday. Since Coons switched schools, we thought, what if we switched the color of, our, of the rival logos? We had Caitlin Potch and Gunnar Troyan swap the logos and ask students what they think. Here's what they had to I say. I hate to say it, but the blue coyote looks a lot better. Yeah, I agree. Oh, the, the blue coyote is kind of cool, uh -huh. actually. I gotta go the jackrabbit one, though. You like the red jackrabbit? Mm -hmm. Wow. I think jackrabbits are ugly no matter what, Correct. so I'm going to have to go with the blue coyote. I, I, I fear I like the blue coyote. I fear I like the blue coyote as well. Yeah. I honestly like the jackrabbit one, the red jackrabbit. They blue should coyote. switch their color. Officially. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I don't, I, don't, I don't know about that one. That makes me a little uncomfortable. I don't know. That makes my skin crawl. I don't like it. I don't like those colors. Oh, uh, no. I think there's a reason why we went with red. Okay, I'm a big red fan, so maybe that's part of the reason I chose USD, but um, definitely I'm kind of a big fan of the Jackrabbits personally, but yeah. I think the, the coyote looks better. But honest input, the blue yote doesn't look bad. I would say the blue coyote. It's kind of cool. But the red Jackrabbit, I don't know, that's a lot of red on the Jackrabbit. The blue coyote, that's kind of cool. The blue coyote looks way better than the red Jackrabbit. Oh, that just does not look right at all. Yeah, no, that does not fit. Looks pretty good. I mean, honestly, theirs looks pretty good with the blue, I gotta say. Ours with the red doesn't, doesn't go together. Yeah, I feel like people would go to both universities less. Coyotes all the way. 
always coyote. I'm going to have to stick with the jackrabbits. The red looks pretty sick. Um, though I think the blues is good, but the red, it just, I can't get behind a coyote. I'm sorry. Coaches are often seen as the leader of a team, and that's no different with the coyotes. After starting the season with a 6-1 record, Bob Nielsen has led his Coyotes to an undefeated record in conference play and the second spot in the Missouri Valley Conference rankings. Nielsen credits his team's leadership, which has helped the team boast this winning season's record. Yeah, I think you just you, you rely on the leadership in your football team. You know, certainly from my standpoint, you know, uh, it's about the next series. Nielsen knows that his team will be prepared when it comes to game time for Saturday's nationally televised matchup with SDSU. It's all about, <clears throat> again, just establishing the focus of what's important, and it's those 60 minutes uh, between kickoff and end and whistle and making sure that we're in the best possible position um, and uh, ready to execute at the highest level uh, every snap. The Coyotes are preparing to go to Brookings, ready for the game that already has big stakes. Next on the USD-SDSU Rivalry Special, we talk with game analysts to see what will happen when the two teams hit the gridiron. We also hear from students about their predictions for Saturday's game. <laughs> This year's game is a battle of two FCS heavyweights, both offensively and defensively. On offense, USD averages 38.6 points per game for 7th in the nation, while SDSU averages 34.7, which is tied for 14th. Joining us now are Coyote Radio analysts Cole Larsh and Zach Schumacher to talk about the two teams. Guys, we have a great matchup ahead of us. Yeah, definitely. Both teams are high-powered offenses with two really good quarterbacks. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of really good quarterback play between Bauman and Mark Gronowski for SDSU. But I think the highlight of both these teams is going to be the running backs. Tra Travis Tice and Charles Pierre Jr. for USD, the top two running backs in the Valley. And Amar Johnson on the other side. Also Chase Mason, like we just highlighted before, technically backup quarterback. But he services like a second or third running back for their squad. You'll see Angel Johnson, too, the local guy playing for South Dakota State, the uh, running back position. So some really big names in this matchup offensively. Potentially even stronger than the offenses of these teams are the defenses, which both rank in the top four. Defensively, USD ranks second, allowing 11.43 points per game, and SDSU ranks fourth, allowing 14.29 points per game. You two have been following both teams. What do you expect to see defensively in this one? A defense is going to be huge in this game, uh, taking how they high-powered offense they are. Both of them are plus in the turnover margins with USD plus six and SDSU plus three. Yeah, I think one thing we're going to see too in this game is, like you said, with the turnover margin, but also the pass defense just in yards allowed and interceptions and takeaways both rank very high in the FCS. But not only that, their run defense, I think that's going to play a big key in this game. Both teams are going to want to run the ball early on offense. Defensively, you got to get up there and stop the run, and both teams very high up in FCS ranks as well. they got a lot of key pieces. I mean, just for USD, Gary Bryant, the third leading tackler, then a shorter, also another leading tackler, and leads the team in interceptions. And Nick Gase, the big man up front, six sacks on the season. I think USD's defensive line might be the key to this game. The history between these two teams is long and storied, but both teams will tell you different stories. Cole, what is the story for USD? Well, there is a slight discrepancy between what these, what these two teams actually report in wins, losses, and ties. 
Uh, SDSC reports 57 wins, 52 losses, and 7 ties. USD 57 wins, 53 losses, and 7 ties. And SDSU leading the series in both of those. There's actually three different years where they're different, 1900, 1901, and 1922. But, I mean, it all really just comes down to we're off by one game. Zach, what about SDSU uh, kind of catches your eye for this one? Yeah, definitely. SDSU leads the, uh, the victories right now. So definitely they have kind of controlled the, the games over the last couple of years. So USD wants to get back in the winning record since SDSU has kind of owned USD since the last couple of years. Yeah, 2021, the last win for USD. We asked students from both schools what they think the final score of the game is going to be, and it's fair to say expectations are different. Do you guys have any score predictions for the USD SDSU football game or anybody you think is gonna win over another? You know, I'm just I'm just gonna go with SDSU all the way. I think they're gonna win. I think it's gonna be a blowout. Yeah, SDSU wins by a lot for sure. Um, I think it's gonna be 35-21 SDSU on top. We're gonna blow them out by 28 points. 31 to 49. Us, obviously. I think in a Jacks win, 34 to 21. I think it's going to be a little bit of a, it's going to be a good game, good defensive stand by us, but going to get the solid W. 46 to like 24. I think SDSU is going to kill USD personally. I'm going to go 47 to 12. I feel like it'll be a close game. I think Coyotes are going to win. I think it'll the score will bounce back and forth between Jackrabbits and the Yotes. Close game. Yeah. yeah. What about you guys? I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I, agree. <laughs> I don't have any predictions, but I think we got it. Got it in the bag? Oh, yeah. No doubt in my mind. So I can honestly see it being like a really close game with it being in like the 20s for both sides. I'm going blowout game. Go Yotes. Okay, I don't want to jinx it, but like... I low-key feel like we have a really good chance of winning. We've been playing well this year, and we're ranked number four right now, and they just lost to NDSU, so I think we have a good shot of winning. I don't have a prediction, but I think we have a good shot of winning. Yotes, 17-14. to 14. Okay, just going off of past, I think that SDSU is going to win, and the score prediction is going to be like 7-14. I think it'll be a close game, but I think uh, USC will come through and win. 24-14 Coyotes. So guys, what do you think the score will be? I think it's going to be uh, both defense and offense are going to be highlighted in this game. But I think USD defense is a little bit better, and they're going to win 24-21 off a game-winning field goal. You know, it was really a toss-up for me, but I think it's going to come down to home field advantage in the Dana J. Dykehouse Stadium. 19,000 strong, screaming at you all game. I think if this game was at the Dakota Dome, it'd be a little, dip, little bit different. I got SDSU by 4, 28-24. It's going to be a very entertaining game throughout the whole thing. Yeah, for sure. This game sold out. Uh, in Dana J. Dykow Stadium in Brookings this Saturday. And then on Zach's point, Will Leyland, the, uh, the kicker to win it, he claims. To find out what the voice of the Coyotes thinks will happen, Ethan is live in the studio with John Thayer for his take on Saturday's game. Thank you, Charlie. John, you've been following these two teams all season. Do you think we're going to see any surprises on Saturday? Well, I think when you look at surprises, the question is going to be who's in and who's out, right? Both teams have dealt with some injuries over the last couple of weeks. So who's able to play? Uh, who isn't able to go on Saturday? That could factor into this matchup. One of the big surprises could be it's going to be a nice evening in Brookings. Uh, you know, oftentimes when South Dakota and South Dakota State have played in the past, it's cold, there's snow, but we got a beautiful night for football. Absolutely. Thank you, John. Next, we'll see if students from each university can say nice things about each other. And we talk with super fans for both the Coyotes and the Jackrabbits.
USC and SDSU both have big fan bases, but no one might be as big of a fan of each team as Mark Went for the Coyotes and Dan Meegard for the Jackrabbits. KYOT's Hunter Olson talked with the so-called superfans. It's one of the biggest games of the year for many fans of both the University of South Dakota and South Dakota State. However, for a few fans, they take this rivalry more seriously than others. Mark Went, a longtime Coyotes fan, says his fandom for the school began at an early age. It's, it started early. Um, I remember as a, a little guy, my dad used to refer to uh, the USD SDSU football game as a civil war. Dan Meegard, on the other hand, says that he was born with the blue and yellow in his blood. Yeah, I would say that uh, I was born to be a jackrabbit. And when I was a kid, we went to a lot of uh, basketball and football games. When asked what they think separates the universities from each other, the fans had different opinions on what makes the two schools special. I think it's what you hear when coaches uh, are announced with the new job. They always say this is a special place, and, and that's not just a tagline. I think it's true. I think it's the people. Well, I think, you know, uh, the school is just a little bit bigger. Um, and so we have a, a little larger fan base, and I think we have a more passionate fan base. Uh, I think the SDSU fans are more loyal, um, more willing to go to games, more willing to give money back to the university. This weekend's matchup will mark the 117th meeting between the two schools. But for Dan and Mark, this will just be another game in their storybook rivalry. For KYOT TV, I'm Hunter Olson. Went and Meegard can be found at almost every home game for their favorite university. Our final question for students before the big game, what nice thing could they say about their rival school? Here's what they had to say. Can you say something nice about USD? No. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I don't think... <laughs> they have good colors. I like the color yeah. red. Red's a nice color on them. I would say they have a pretty nice stadium. and. They have a pretty good fan base. I think they have a nursing program. I mean, they got a they got a pretty cool dome. Um, I like the color red. I don't know. They at least have like a decent color, you know. Um, when I looked up uh, USD on Google, Old Main came up and it looked really beautiful. So I'd say the campus is definitely a big plus. They have a nice gas station too. Challenge you to say something nice about your rival SDSU. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything. I apologize. They have a good dance team. Um, I like their colors. You guys have nice looking home uniforms. I think they have a great engineering program. I like the colors. They're in the right state. I'm an RA, so we had like an RA conference thing, and um, they honestly hosted it pretty well. It was kind of really well organized, so I'll give them that. They did a pretty good job with that. So. Uh, they got really nice athletic complexes. Well, Ethan, uh, well, there's some interesting uh, answers there. Uh, what would you say a nice thing about the, the Jackrabbits or the team up north? Well, it's a really good thing that they're up north. <laughs> well, yeah, that's uh, for sure. And, and how about uh, us down here in, in the south? Oh, I just love it. I mean, this school is perfect for me, and uh, it would be, it's perfect for everybody. I feel like those people up north should really you know, change their mind and make the decision to come down here. Uh, both teams, or both schools specifically, have a lot of positives uh, to go with their respective schools. And that's it for the 2024 USD-SDSU football rivalry special presented by USD Sports Broadcasting Class. Catch the game on Saturday on ESPNU at 6.30 Central Time. And look for the volleyball rivalry special coming up in two weeks. Thanks for watching.